just after the turn of the millennium, the vibe in the ATL is strong. The city is surging with ambitious youth, looking to find their path and to make their fortunes. Atlanta in 2006 was a different time than Atlanta of today. It was a thriving city and a metropolis on the rise. And African-American men from all over the South were flocking to Atlanta because there were so many HBCUs in Atlanta as well. The HBCU is an historically black college and university. And Morehouse is the premier for black males. The Morehouse man mystique is sharp, educated, and someone you expect to be a leader. As one of the elites in the HBCU system, Morehouse has its pick of applicants. They come because they know not only can they get a good education, but they are going to be among some of the best people who are going to make an impact as they graduate and matriculate on to the next phase of their life. Morehouse sits like an oasis of sophistication and security within Atlanta's often rough and dangerous downtown. But the protected bubble of Morehouse is destroyed when tragedy strikes one of their own. On July 8, 2006, our department received a phone call from Peggy Walker. She was calling us out of California. She was the mother of Carnell Walker, a 23-year-old student at Morehouse College. And at that point, she had not spoken with him for several weeks. And so she decided that she needed to contact the police department to go do a wellness check to see if he was OK, since she could not get in touch with him. I was one of a few on-call detectives at the time. I went straight to the location. And as I made my way around the house, the back door to the residence was ajar. When I looked in, you're looking into a living room. And it appeared that every loose item had been pushed together into the center of the floor. The couch was missing a couple of cushions. And there were obvious signs of struggle. I could also see on the wall what appeared to be blood. There was a bloody handprint on the wall. And there was a definite odor, fairly overwhelming. One thing that was very interesting, there was a dining room or like a kitchen chair that was in the master bedroom closet. That chair was sitting directly underneath the attic access. So it was obvious that whomever put that chair there also went up to the attic. So that told me right there that somebody was looking for something and they were looking for something very diligently. The chair had a foam cover over the top of it. It was not a hard wooden chair, it was a covered chair. And not only was there blood droplets that dropped straight down as if there's no movement, there was also blood swiping across the chair. So we knew that whomever had been in that chair and whoever deposited that blood on that chair did it in two separate entities because we had droplets that went straight down and then we had swiping that appeared to be different patterns, possibly at different times. So we knew that that was also a large piece of evidence for us. Carnell was always like energetic and active and always in the mix of everything. Yeah, he had his little swag and how he had how he rapped. He had his own little style. And uh, he went by C Money, like C Dash Money. He was the man bigger than life. C Money. No, everyone had nicknames. That Morehouse College, like, hey, that's that's Tall Mike. And it'd be funny because Tall Mike would be a short guy, like five foot one. You know, or they'd be like, that's Tiny Tim. But Tiny Tim would be a six foot six linebacker that weighed 400 pounds. And so it was always funny with the nicknaming that would happen on campus. And even though people knew him as Carnell, most people knew him by C Money or C Money Now. When he wanted to name his uh, record label, he named it Triple Goldmine Records. 
And so Triple Gold Mob Records was what he was taking to Atlanta with him, was with the name of his uh, record label, which he wanted to start and, and, and manage. Our first song we recorded together, he made the, the hook. It was smash on the gas, man, get your money fast. Smash on the gas, man, get your money fast. I'm 100% real, keep it real, keep it real. All about my $100 bill, so how you feel, see money. HBCUs and Morehouse College really reminds me of a brotherhood. You know, you can get education anywhere, right? Two plus two at Harvard is four. Two plus two at Morehouse is also four. And so it's not as much the focus on the black letter education that you get, but it's more so the sense of belonging, the sense of inclusion, the sense of family that you get from an HBCU. As an African-American, so many times in our society, we've been marginalized. So when I walked through the doors at Morehouse College, it was the first time in my life where I felt accepted. There were so many African-American men there that had my similar background, my shared stories, and my shared experiences. And it was a feeling like I had never felt in my entire life. And that feeling gives you the confidence to know that I am someone, that I can be successful, and that there are people like me on the same journey and the same path in life. You know, this is a bastion of black excellence. And so that's really at the heart of why we're here, because people are leaving with that sense of pride, accomplishment, and that I can do anything spirit. And to me, that really encapsulates the HBCU experience.